Good morning, church. How many people like a white Christmas? This is all your fault. Stop with the white Christmas stuff, will you? <laughs> I think we might be in luck this year. It's good to see so many people here this morning. It's good that uh, if, I'm sure if we look today, our streaming numbers will be up. It's so cool that we've invested in the technology that on uh, when there's days that are questionable for people to get to church, that they can still join us in worship. So. Uh, amen for that. The Christmas story we know so well, we teach our children, our children know the Christmas story. And sometimes when we get so familiar with Scripture, we think there's no more to glean from it. There's no more to take or to learn from Scripture. Pastor Tim is going to show us today that the living word, no, there's no end to what can be revealed in Scripture to us. And today, in the midst of the Christmas story, we're going to take real life. We're going to take real life lessons, real life application from the, from the Christmas story, and talk about what happens when you get that call. What happens when the when the phone rings? When you have that conversation, that 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 life changing, life altering conversation, and even in the midst of the Christmas story, uh, we we will see how God would have us respond to that. The United Methodist website today calls today's worship, worship on the brink. Isn't that cool? We're right on the brink. We're right on the edge. We're right on the edge of, of celebrating Christmas. We're right in the forefront of being John the Baptist in this day. We are the modern day herald, so we're on the brink. And I, I thought that was really cool. The United Methodist website's been really interesting during, during Advent, saying bifocal worship, that we look to Christmas and we look beyond Christmas to the second coming of Christ. Several announcements today. We will celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent this morning. It's always fun when we have this conversation, Christmas Eve service, 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Christmas Day is Sunday. We'll have a normal 10 o'clock service, and again on New Year's Day, a 10 o'clock service. So for the next two Sundays, we'll be up and running. The bulletin says that we won't be able to stream on, uh, on Christmas Day, that is not true. That's been rectified, so we'll be able to broadcast on Christmas Day as well. Amen for that. Uh, Sandy just let me know that last night at the warming shelter, they had four people sleeping on the floor. The shelter's completely full. Now they got people sleeping on the floor. So obviously as the weather turns this way, 
um, the opportunity to serve increases. See Sandy if you can help out. Even if it's not taking a slot or a spot to help out on the schedule, um, if you have a heart to, to help out at the warming shelter, now's the time to get involved with that if you would please see Sandy. In your bulletin is envelopes for the Christmas Eve um, offering. Take advantage of that. They'll be in the pews on Christmas Eve as well. That's a special offering that we take every year that goes towards just the development, the ministry development fund, so the work that the church does. Hark! Hark! Do you hear what I hear? The fluttering sound of... I, 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 I'm trying to say angels. Good morning. I'm just here, we're here to remind you about our family Christmas night and birthday party for Jesus tonight. It's for everyone, for little ones, for big ones, Kids, if you're in here, tell your parents you have to come tonight because you're not going to want to miss this. There's a sign-up sheet in the narthex, um, and it's not too late to sign up. That'll give us an idea how many tables to set up. And if you're bored this afternoon and you want to make a thing of soup, there's no complaining about that. So the sign-up sheets are out there. Wear your holiday best. Santa hat, ugly Christmas sweater. Feel free to be festive tonight. And in case you're worried, we're going to deploy the heavenly guardians to surround your cars as you come this evening. So I want to introduce you to my friends, Shirley, Present. Goodness, Here. and Mercy. Yo. And they'll tell you more about tonight. <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, hey there. How are you humans? Hey, I just want you guys, don't be nervous. I know how you humans are. Every time the angels come and walk amongst you, you get a little nervous. But just relax, we're just here for the family fun night. We heard South Harbor Creek throws a mean party. So, um, one other thing, my, my favorite, of course, is the food. So, um, if you're talking to you know who, please don't let him know this. Although I realize he's all knowing, but he's usually busy zooming in on church services right now, so I think I'm cool. Um, but <clears throat> the fishes and loaves, it just gets old after a while. So I'm really, really looking forward to tonight's soup and mac and cheese. So by all means, come on out, enjoy the food. Um, goodness, are you up next? Goodness, doesn't that sound delicious? <laughs> well, if that's not enough, kids, there's going to be so much fun. We're going to have games and singing. Did you hear the part about the birthday party? You know what comes with that, right? Birthday cake. It's going to be a great time, so make sure that you make your big people bring you. Okay? Deal? Deal. Deal. Surely you all have are prepared for Christmas. Everybody's got their Christmas packages wrapped and everybody has their baking done and their shopping done. But how many of you, and I want to show up hands, how many of you have your family photos taken yet? Ooh. And you don't even have any family photos. We have nobody. I and mean, you don't have any family photos of your church family. We have a wonderful backdrop of the tree out there. You could take a serious photo. And we also have props so that you can do a silly one. So make sure that you come out tonight. See you tonight. Come on, up here. Come on let's pray together. Come on, we'll all pray okay. together. Father God, we give you thanks that you have a sense of humor. And that you have given us a sense of humor and that joy is a, is a gift and a blessing from you. We give you thanks for that. May your anointing be on the service today. May you prepare Pastor Tim to bring a strong word. May we be prepared to receive it. And we ask for your blessing on this day and on the events this evening. We give you thanks in this season. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs>
The scripture I'll be reading is Hebrews 10, 5 through 10. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me with burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. First, he said, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them. Through they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, here I am, I have come to do your will. He set aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Let us share together in the litany of light. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Bring forth into joy a song. Sing to praise. With the lyre and the sound of the melody. With the trumpet and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. We have seen the candles of hope, salvation, and renewal lit. Today, your theme is joy. Is there any way at all that we cannot say this song joyfully? In fact, you may want to sing it. <clears throat> You may have heard an anthem joyfully using these words, or think of songs that have the word happy in them. Did you think of these? Happy days are here again. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. I want to be happy. And from the Peanuts musical, happiness is two kinds of ice cream. Compare these fun words with the great joy and death of the psalm or with the angels announcing the birth of Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. They didn't proclaim mere happiness. They proclaimed a great joy. We need to be people of great joy, making a joyful noise. It is good to have Advent to remind us. Our themes for the last three weeks have been hope, salvation, and renewal. We have hope, and our hope is filled in Jesus, our salvation. We always have a chance for renewal. Hope, salvation, and renewal are certainly worth being joyous about. This morning, we will light the fourth candle, that of joy. <coughs> Together, please. We pray in thanksgiving to you, O giver of great joy for the gifts of hope, salvation, and renewal. Keep that joy growing in us. Amen.
Good morning. This morning's Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah 7, 10 through 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel. He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. For before the boy knows enough, to reject the wrong and choose the right. The land of the two kings you dread will be laid to laid rest. This is the word of God for the people of God. All right, if we can have all the children come down and join me. Thank you, Morgan. That was beautiful. I feel like I should have been first because that was really good. <laughs> Anybody else? Here's one. <laughs> okay, thanks for coming down and joining me. So I was driving a few weeks ago in the dark at night, and kind of God tells us stuff sometimes, and he kind of said, like, hey, you should tell this story. Like, he reminded me of something super important. So can I tell you what he told me? Okay, thank you. So we're going to use some other stuff to help us. Anybody know who this is? Grinch. The Grinch. I love the story of the Grinch, and we have the book, too, about the Grinch, because, you know, it did start with a book somewhere a long time ago. What do we know about this guy? He does hate Christmas. Can you imagine? <coughs> what else do we know about him? He's mean. His heart was two sizes too small. Thank you, Morgan. We're going to get there, huh? Yeah. We don't want to have a too small heart like the Grinch, do we? No. So I took some notes to kind of help me because I was afraid I would just talk about the Grinch all day because he's so cool. Um, he really is. <laughs> um, so he hated Christmas, and what was the one thing he really wanted to do? Steal it. He wanted to stop Christmas. Can you imagine wanting to stop Christmas from happening? 
I know. So he lived north of a place called Whoville. We know that with the Who's. And the Who's loved Christmas. I could have been a Who, I'm telling you. Um, they loved the packages and the bows and the trees and the singing and everything about it. And he hated all of it, right? So what does he do? He gets his little dog, Max, and he gets a very bad Santa suit. And he gets his little sleigh, and he goes, and he takes all of their Who stuff, doesn't he? He takes their packages, their bows, their Christmas food, everything. Can you imagine? And what does he do? What, what happened? He goes up to back to his little mountain, and he's like, ha, ha, ha. There's going to be no Christmas now. Yes, you guys are so smart about the Grinch. You guys are like my BBF, new BFFs because you love Christmas and know about the Grinch. Yeah, so he gets up in the morning and he's like, ha ha, I got those who's, there'll be no Christmas. And he hears them singing. I bet they're singing things like angels we have heard on high, right? They're singing all of their Christmas songs because Christmas is inside of them. It's their spirit, right? So here's the cool part. We're going to bring it home for you guys. Now this is the really cool part. Is what happens then? Does he kind of say... Okay, I'm just going to ignore them. And the who say we're going to ignore that grumpy old Grinch? What happens? His heart grew three sizes, which is pretty cool because it's a size bigger than he started. Because his heart was first two sizes too small, and then it got to three sizes bigger. And then the who's invite him to join them. He returns all their stuff because that's the nice thing to do. But the who say, hey, you were kind of mean and you were grouchy and mean and you tried to steal our Christmas, but we're still going to let you join us. They showed him love and peace and joy. And they didn't say, you're mean, stay over there with your dog. They said, come join us. You can eat with us and you can celebrate our Christmas with us, right? So here's the really cool part. This is what God kind of reminded me of, is that no matter what, God does the same thing for us. Are there days that maybe we're a little grumpy, a little grouchy? Maybe if we have a brother or sister, we maybe don't get along with them. It happens, right? No matter what, God says, hey, I'm always here with you, and I love you no matter what. There's nothing that we can do that takes us out of the love of God. Isn't that a cool story? We never thought the Grinch would kind of correlate to Christmas and God, but it's true, right? Yeah. So I am thankful every day for God's love and the peace and the joy that he brings us in our hearts, right? And I'm thankful that he can give it to you guys, right? So, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, thanks. You guys are so good. You're so quiet. You're awesome. Thank you. So how about we pray, and then before you leave, I have a little present in here to remind you of the Grinch in love. How's that? Okay, because it's sweet, right? All right, so let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for these children. Thank you for the love that you show us every day. Thank you for never giving up on us um, and reminding us of your love in small ways every day. Um, Please be with us and bless us through the remainder of our holiday season and days after. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks, Angela. She's handed, still handing out presents, so if you wave at her and smile, maybe you'll score something. <laughs> um, this morning before we go to, to prayer, I wanted to just mention, I don't know if all of you had heard that Rolf Bork passed away last week. And so we need to be praying for his family as they're going through this time of, of grief and loss. Um, I also, even though we're talking about joy this morning, There are a lot of people that are really suffering through the holidays and not feeling that joy. Um, You know, just Sandy talking about the the people sleeping on the floor in the over, that's the overflow shelter. So all the other places are already full. So this morning, we're just going to pray for those that aren't feeling and experiencing Christ's joy this holiday season. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you with 
such grateful heart for the, the opportunity to worship in this place, the opportunity to come here on, even through the snow because we have good cars and good tires and family that will help us and clean off our cars. And, and then we come here to church and we laugh and we worship and we smile and we're warm. And Father, so it's easy for us to be grateful and experience your joy. But Father, this morning we want to lift up to you those that are struggling um, this holiday season, not because of the holiday necessarily, but just this time of year when everyone around us is, is happy and joyful or there are joyful things. And, and Father, there are some that are just so hurting inside. So we want to lift them up to you. Father, we pray for those in our city and around the country and really around the world that are experiencing homelessness. Father, we pray for your supernatural power and touch in their lives and in their hearts and in their circumstances. Father, help us to not just feel bad for them, but Lord, help show us ways that we can step it up to help too, that we can be your hands and your feet. But Father, we pray for, for their hearts that that they will be touched by you, that they'll be encouraged by you this season through us. Lord, for those that are struggling with depression and sadness during the holidays, for those that are struggling with grief, Father, we just pray for your touch on their hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would be moving in their way, that you would, your way in their hearts, that they would experience that little spark of knowing that they are not alone that you love them, that you will never leave them or forsake them. Father, help us as your church to also be your light and your love to those that we know that are struggling. In the busyness of all the things that we're going through, Lord, help us to stop. Help us to ask you who we need to encourage, who we need to reach out to. Lord, so that hopelessness is just a little bit lighter and the truth of who you are and your love beyond measure for each one of your children never, ever wavers, no matter what the circumstance. So, Father, for those of us that are not struggling, for those of us who are experiencing a season of goodness, we thank you and we praise you, Father, and we ask that you would break our hearts for those that aren't. Lord, be with us this morning in our service. Be with Pastor Tim as, as he gives us the message. Lord, fill us with your joy so that we can be so full that we go and we spread that joy to other people. Lord, be with us right now as we pray. Your church prays together the prayer you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join Kevin and I for the hymn. Hmm. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in the dark street shineth the Everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. The mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of
silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his hand. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive, still the dear Christ enters in. We give you that for a reason. Would you join with me in an affirmation of our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from Matthew. The first chapter, verses 18 through 25. Matthew writes these words. <clears throat> this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Hard to believe that four weeks ago, we were finishing up leftovers of turkey stuffing, mashed potatoes, gravy, and berry, cranberry sauce. I forgot my cranberry sauce. Four weeks ago, there was no snow on the ground. In fact, it was actually very beautiful out, if I remember correctly. Probably 50, 60 degrees, which is pretty warm for this time of year. Hard to believe that it's been a month that we've been going through this season. But we've looked at uh, the hope that gets us ready for the birth of Christ and for his, and more importantly, for his return, the hope that we have that he will return. We identify Jesus as the author of our salvation. He is the one. 
And we looked at the joy that we receive because Jesus is our Redeemer. Today is a little bit different, though. Today we're going to look at Joseph. Now, if you've, if you've ever tried to study Joseph, you know that there's very little said about him in the Scriptures. In fact, after the birth of, of, of Christ, we have that little bitty scene at the temple when Jesus is about 12 and mom and dad are looking for him. But outside of that, we know very little about Jesus. He doesn't show up at the crucifixion. We can only assume that he has passed on by then. We know that he was a carpenter. We know that he taught the trade to his son. But beyond that, we know very little about Joseph. But he gets some really scary news, doesn't he? Shocking news. Your girlfriend is pregnant. Now, for some of you, that may hit home directly. I don't know, and I'm not asking you to reveal. But you may know that feeling. Maybe you were a young mother and you weren't wed and you got the news that you were pregnant. Or maybe you were a young man and you find out that your girlfriend is pregnant. Or maybe you were a mom and dad of the young man or the young woman and you found out that the young lady is pregnant. There's a lot of shock happening here, right? There's a lot of people with a lot of thoughts and a lot of ideas and, and sometimes those ideas come across very angry and, and sad and and scared, there's just a whole range of emotion that happens in that moment. But we know, biologically, how this happens. And if you don't, please talk to your parents. <laughs> but Joseph hadn't been with Mary. How could this possibly happen? He hasn't been with her. So the only other explanation is what? She cheated on him, right? I mean, isn't that where we would go today? Well, you must have cheated on me because that's not mine. Well, now that brings up a whole other set of emotions and frustrations and shock and anger and all of that that comes with it. But what I want us to look at today is how Joseph handles this news. Now, it shouldn't be news, actually, should it? Because if you were listening to the passage that was read from Isaiah, we are told that a virgin will give birth to a child. Isaiah is confronting Ahaz, and Ahaz is a horrible king. He, he ruled for 16 years, and, and he led people away from God and to worship Asherah poles and false gods and, and to intermarry with, with people from other, other uh, religious-type sects and so forth. And, and, and he just was a horrible, horrible king. And, and Isaiah is confronting him, look, you're destroying us. You're going to lead us into a whole lot of trouble here. And he says, ask God for a sign. And it's, it's interesting. The one person who's leading everybody away from God suddenly says, oh, no, I'm not, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to tempt God. Like, you've been doing that all along. Now, all of a sudden, you have a sense of conscience. Isaiah says, fine, then God's going to give you a sign. And then God speaks. This is really cool. God speaks, and he says, a virgin will give birth to a child. And you will call him Emmanuel. So this should not be news 
to anybody, to, to, um, to Joseph. He should know this, right? But he's willing, God love him, he's willing to quietly remove himself from the situation and move on. Not to cause Mary any further harm, any further pain, any further embarrassment, but just quietly divorce himself from the situation. But the angel says to him, wait. Don't be afraid. Take Mary as your wife. And he does. He takes Mary as his wife. And of course, we know the rest of the story. But what I want you to see here is, when was the last time you got some shocking news? How did you react when you got that news? How did it strike you? Maybe it was an unplanned pregnancy. Maybe it was a, 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 a severe medical diagnosis. Maybe it was a late night call about a loved one. How did you respond to that? Joseph gives us an example here this morning that we are to listen to God. The news may not be great. The news may not be something that we want to hear. But we are to remain faithful to God and to his, his calling on our lives. We are to open our hearts and our minds. We are to allow God to speak through us into the situation that is before us. Angela gave a great little message to the kids this morning about love and inviting, inviting that person into our lives who, who we may very easily and with a lot of reason despise terribly. But what happens to the Grinch that day? Because he was shown love, because he was shown acceptance. Joseph did that. Joseph knew that biologically that child was not his. But that's what makes the story so great, because if it had been Joseph's, if it had been Joseph's son, Jesus would not be fully human and fully divine. He'd just be human. But because Mary was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, Jesus becomes fully human and fully divine. It saddens me today when I hear so many Christian scholars and, and Christian people say, well, Mary wasn't a virgin in the sense that we think she was a virgin. She has to be. She has to be a virgin. The scriptures from Isaiah tell us that she will be, and if she's not, then Jesus is not who we say he is. But thankfully, she is, or was. Thankfully, Jesus is fully human and fully divine. Because it's only through that that you and I can be saved, that we can be redeemed. So let's, let's remember the example that Joseph gave to us today. To listen to the word of God, to follow the call on our heart to open up and not be afraid to allow God to work through us for God's ultimate glory and for our salvation. Let us pray.
Almighty God, there are times when we receive shocking news. There are times we don't receive it very well. Please give us the patience that Joseph showed. Please give us the willingness to listen to you and to be open and to allow your spirit to work through us for others. We thank you for Joseph and his witness this morning. And it's in his son Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen.
Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord give us the patience and wisdom of Joseph to listen and obey even when the news is hard. Now and forevermore.